everybody. Welcome to the Fortunate Prince YouTube channel. I am an independent publisher, uh, mostly working through Amazon. And we just published a book called The Ultimate Book of Nonograms, also known as Picross, Griddlers, Hanji, or Paint by Numbers puzzles. And I wanted to make sure that I gave you a quick tutorial on how to do them so that if you do enjoy them, you can enjoy our book and hopefully others. There aren't a whole lot of nonogram books out there. There are a few, which is why we wanted to post one. Um, so essentially the rules of a nonogram, they're actually pretty simple, but it still ends up being a very good logic puzzle. So this is a five by five grid. They can be much bigger. In our book, you'll notice there are ones that are much bigger because they actually end up creating a picture. So essentially the rules are, are very simple. Uh, one, essentially there will be certain boxes that you fill in black and certain boxes you leave white. There will be numbers on the top and the left side. Each number dictates how many boxes should be black. And the number will always dictate a set of boxes in sequence, okay? So there, if it says two, that means the two boxes are connected to each other. It's not like one box and then you skip a few spaces. The other rule is if there are ever two numbers like this, there will always be a break between the two numbers. So this would mean one box is filled in and then there's two boxes in this row that are next to each other that are filled in. So there has to be at least one empty box between the two numbers. Say the numbers, just as an example, were seven and eight, and it was a really big grid. That means seven boxes in a row will be black. There has to be at least one white box, and then eight more boxes in a row will be in sequence again. So um, you always have to have at least one white break between them. Uh, that's a good way to help you solve puzzles, OK? So in this sequence, sometimes it's best to start with boxes that you think will help you out. Like, since the numbers have to be in sequence, let's start with this one. This is the highest number, and it's and it's a 5 by 5 grid, which means it's 4. Which means, since they have to be in sequence, it will either be these 4 or these 4, okay? Now, something to help you solve this problem that can really help is that this tells you that this row will have 3 boxes in sequence. Since it's a grid by 5, again, it has to be the first 3 or the last three. Now, if it is the last three, that basically guarantees that um, the first four have to be the sequence for this because one of these boxes will be filled in, which means if you filled in the bottom four, that would be, have to be left blank. So if it is these last three, then the first four would have to be here. You can't really know for sure, but what you can do is you can start kind of putting a dot in the boxes that you think are correct and go from there. Um, and there are other ways you can kind of try to fill this in. So like, for instance, this box, um, another way to try to figure that out would be to try to solve it for these boxes, because if any of these are filled in, then obviously it would have to be the first three, right? So for this particular puzzle, it can either be the last three, the first three, same with this, but then same with this one. So essentially this could also dictate it too. So what you could start doing is start like putting a dot in each of these boxes, the ones that you think should be shaded black, and start solving the puzzle. And if you end up being right, you can end up filling them in. So I think the way I do it is essentially I would say I think it's there's a good chance it's going to be these three, which would mean this would have to be these first four, which means this couldn't be this one. So it would either be the bottom three or the middle three here. Um, also, since this is since this says it could be three and it starts with this one it would have to be these three right because essentially they all have to be connected so it would have to be these three which would mean that in this situation this would be done right because these three would be for this line these three would be for this one this one's done as well and this would also be the one right which means all, all those are done this one is technically done too because it says that only two boxes will be filled in black it would be these two this one says one and two, which means the two would be finished. There has to be a break. So either this or this could be one. And for this line, uh, essentially, it would, and see here, here, here's, here's what would help you out, right? For this line, it's one, which means this is done. This one's done, this one's done, which means there should be, none of these should be filled in. So if this one's two, it has to be these two, right? So, and if that has to be those two, this one tells you that there's supposed to be three in this line. So it would have to be these three. And since this one has a two left and this one says that there should be two, it would have to be those two. At this point, the puzzle is complete. Uh, because let's see, three, two, one, break, two. There's a two and a one, so two, break, one. So it lets you know, see, 
one first, and then there's a two, and then there's two here. Same here, three down, four down, one, three, and two. So since they all line up, you know you have gotten the puzzle correct. And that is how you do nonograms. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoy your nonograms books. And it's just another kind of logic puzzle that you can add to your repertoire of puzzles that you love to do. So thank you so much for checking out our YouTube channel. If you did find this video helpful and you want to help us out, it would really mean a lot if you would give it a like and subscribe to our channel and uh, hit that notifications bell because it'll let you know when we have new books coming out. So this is Fortunate Prince and we will see you next time. Have a wonderful day.